Is it possible for this mechanism to work? You might say no, and you'd only be partially right. In this video, I'll show you how it works, as well as explain how it's designed and how it operates. And, of course, at the end of the video, I'll share a little secret. Want to know the truth? Then let's go. To begin, I'll take a disc from an angle grinder for cutting tiles. This disc is quite worn out, it's no longer possible to cut tiles with it, so I'll use it. This disc has 18 segments. I'll divide this disc into 5 parts based on the number of working elements of my perpetual rotation machine. The disc diameter is currently 22 centimeters, since the disc is worn out. For precise marking, I'll take a piece of sandwich panel with plastic on both sides and a white foam panel in the middle, so it will be convenient to mark the panel dimensions are 25 by 25 centimeters. I need to make a markup on the panel to find the center. I will use a corner for this. I will also need a 90 degrees angle to divide the circle into 5 parts. To divide a circle into 5 parts, I'll use a method I know using a compass. I won't comment here, just watch how it's done. If anyone doesn't know, or didn't understand the first time, you can pause it, write it down for yourself, or watch it again. With this simple method I was able to find a distance equal to one-fifth of the circumference. Now, using this distance, I will divide the circumference into five parts. You can see that, yes, indeed, everything matches. This method is quite popular. But not everyone knows it, so if anyone didn't know, then use it. Well, friends, everything is ready. I managed to divide the disc into 5 equal parts and now I will put a disc from an angle grinder on this template and make marks on it. This way, I managed to mark the disc into 5 equal parts. For further work I will need 5 bolts with a diameter of 16 millimeters. I arrange the bolts so that the center falls on the center of the bolt so that the bolts stand evenly. I screw on the nut one by one and weld the bolts to the disc. I welded all the bolts tightly, I don't want anything to fall off at the most crucial moment, the experiment failed. Friends, you must agree that this looks very unusual, but I took the simplest route, and so a disc from an angle grinder for cutting tiles seemed to me the easiest option for use in my perpetual rotation machine. To secure the disc to the base, I will use the front part of the gearbox from the angle grinder. It has long since fallen into disrepair, but part of the gearbox will be useful to me for these purposes. In one of my previous videos, I tried to replicate a spring motor with long springs using a resonance system to make sure it didn't work. 
I had these springs lying around unneeded, and I'm going to make my own perpetual rotation machine out of them. To do this, I need to remove the mounting rings. They also have the protruding part of the angle grinder gearbox shaft, and I need to saw it off because it will rest against the mounting post of the mechanism itself. Well, now everything is fine, and since it doesn't rest against something, I can start assembling it. I screw the gearbox to the stand with four screws. I use long enough screws to prevent the mechanism from loosening during the process. Nothing sticks, and now I can try rotating the gearbox. To do this, I place an identical used angle grinder disc on the mounting plate, tighten it with a nut, and check how freely it rotates. The result is very good, the disc rotates very easily and smoothly. I screw the gearbox to the stand with four screws. I use long enough screws to prevent the mechanism from loosening during the process. Nothing sticks, and now I can try rotating the gearbox. To do this, I place an identical used angle grinder disc on the mounting plate, tighten it with a nut, and check how freely it rotates. The result is very good, the disc rotates very easily and smoothly. Dear friends, I came up with this design. Now let's experiment a little before continuing to make the perpetual rotation mechanism. I want to test another option. For this, I put a disc with straightened springs on the spindle and try to rotate it a little. It looks pretty funny, I also want to put bolts on the end of the springs. I have 5 of them left, we'll see what happens, I don't think it's anything interesting, but for the sake of experiment, it was still worth trying. As you can see, dear friends, nothing happens. In this version, this mechanism doesn't work. Dear friends, I joked a little, and that's enough of course, it looked funny, but I will continue to assemble my mechanism so that the mechanism rotates in the springs. I need to fill three metal balls. I took the balls from bearings and selected balls of the appropriate diameter of the same size. This is a key point in the construction of this engine. After I put three balls inside the spring, I attach the springs one after another in the shape of a pedal so that the balls roll from the center to the edge of the disc. All springs are installed in their places. Dear friends, before conducting tests again in a horizontal position, I will try to rotate the disc with the springs. To do this, I fix it on the spindle with a standard nut from an angle grinder and try to rotate it. It rotates freely, you can hear the balls moving inside the springs with a characteristic rustling sound. My perpetual rotation machine is finally ready to stop it from rotating spontaneously. I tied a small piece of rope to a stand and secured it with a loop to one of the segments of the angle grinder disc. The rope is constantly taut, and when the rope is removed from the disc, the mechanism begins to rotate independently. The mechanism rotates in one direction, 
This depends on the bending of the springs. Its rotation is fascinating. The machine runs stably and does not accelerate. Dear friends, using a stopwatch, I want to show you that I did not cut this video or edit it. It lasts in one piece, the mechanism rotates steadily, does not speed up or slow down, this is truly mesmerizing and very similar to the truth. And I will try to stop it with my hand, when I stop, the mechanism continues to rotate in the same direction, picks up the same speed and rotates. Friends, let me try to stop it again. I stop the mechanism and it starts spinning up to its nominal speed again. It's amazing. At first glance, it seems that everything is normal, but in fact, it is not. Now I want to show you how the mechanism works in the open air. I also remove the cord that holds the mechanism in a calm state and the mechanism begins to rotate gradually spinning up to its nominal speed. The speed is constant. A little later I will show you how this happens. It all looks quite natural and it seems that in fact the mechanism rotates without the input of any external energy. But in fact, this is not so. Well, now, friends, it's time to share with you the secret of how this mechanism rotates. As you can see, the mechanism is lying on the table. The piece of rope that fixed the mechanism in a calm state has been removed and the mechanism does not rotate. It would seem that it should not rotate because all the balls are in a horizontal plane. In fact, the secret to starting this mechanism is in this thin metal plate. When I showed the mechanism, I lifted it from the floor. You saw this. After that, I placed this metal plate under the base and attached a piece of rope to the disc. The metal plate was connected to two contacts in the form of two screws that were screwed into the mechanism mounting post through the base. Let me demonstrate this. When the two contacts are closed, the mechanism begins to rotate. That is, you can see it gradually picking up speed and not going into higher speeds, that is, the speed remains stable. I'm removing the disc with springs to show you what makes this mechanism rotate instead of the disc. Any device light enough for a small motor installed inside to spin could have springs. Now I unscrew the gearbox from the angle grinder and you can see the micromotor installed inside. It has a fairly large reduction, so it rotates this mechanism freely and at a low speed. The motor is powered by two 18.650 batteries installed in the stand. I'll show them a little later. There are no miracles in this mechanism, dear friends, and it rotates due to electrical energy. Two contacts at the bottom are closed by a plate and power is supplied to the motor. The motor rotates the spindle from an angle grinder, on which a disc with springs is attached. I specifically wanted to show how the battery and power supply were installed. I had to split the stand in two because the batteries and wires were quite difficult to insert into the hole, and getting them out without splitting the board was very problematic. As you can see, two 18.650 batteries are installed inside that power the motor. Well, friends, I've shown you the secret of this mechanism. I believe that gravity mechanisms are utopia. Quite a few people have tried to do this, and no one has succeeded yet. This is what the video turned out to be, friends. Thank you for watching, see you in new videos.